us right into, you were given Tihar jail as almost a punishment. No one had ever been able to run this prison uh, without being taken over by the corruption and the absolute chaos. It was bedlam. And the, when you were getting so famous early on, the big brass didn't like it. You were a woman, you were always in the headlines, you were you know, constantly being dogged by controversy. And they really gave you Tihar Jail to be the inspector general there as a punishment. And take us into those first days. You walk into that bedlam and you did something that was so extraordinary. Just t tell us that story of what was the question you asked the prisoners. The, the prison assignment in, in India, this is the largest prison we're talking about. They did not expect a, a, a short a woman in not in uniform walking the prison head on the very first day. And that's the, the, when I did that, I broke the ice straight away and I started to communicate. And the first thing when I looked at these men and women, and they were all looking at me saying, is she coming here to beat us up? Is she going to come as, as lock us up? Is she going to give us a teacher teach a lesson of their life because I was a cop? But I didn't talk, I wasn't in uniform. I deliberately didn't walk in uniform. I walked in a Patan suit, which, uh, which is a very, uh, which showed, uh, which, which was focusing more on me rather than my dress. So uh, uh, when I walked in, the first question, in fact, the way I broke ice was asking them, do you pray? Do you pray? And they all looked at me and said, they're wondering, what do they say? I said, I'm asking you, do you pray? They did, didn't still answer. So when I looked back at me, there was a guard standing behind me and, and encouraging them to say, keep quiet, don't say anything. Because that was the culture, don't speak. So I told the guard, I said, will you get out of the way? I want to talk to my prisoners. <laughs> so when I put them away, that was serious, that I needed an answer. And I said, I'm, then I got, drew closer and I said, I'm asking you, do you pray? Then some said, start to nod and some said no. And I said then, can we pray? Would you like to pray? But, and the scene was thousands of prisoners in front of you. This wasn't just five or six people. This no. was a hundreds huge of crowd. Them. Hundreds, hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. And they were the all courtyard. waiting to go to the court. Yes. Actually, when I stepped out into the main, from the yes. main gate into it, there were hundreds, yes. There were hundreds like these. Okay. <laughs> there were more. <laughs> and you stepped in front of them. And I said, would you pray? Do yes. you pray? Yes. And then I started the prayer. And I started to sing with them. And all of them joined their hands, and they prayed. And imagine when, the, when they finished the prayer, they opened their eyes, everybody was secure. They hadn't grabbed me, <laughs> and I hadn't beaten them up. So I think that's where the communication started. I think the message was, I'm here for you, for a new way of life, a new way of looking. And then you took this, even more astonishingly, into a whole other dimension, unheard of before, the meditation. That's right. That's true. Well, because the crime grows in the mind, I do believe. Crime is in the mind, and if the mind is washed out, mind is thinking differently, and it's substituting criminal, better thoughts of, against the criminal thoughts, crime would grow. So I took them into meditation programs. We have a mindfulness. They were not Hindu-Muslim meditation programs or seekers. It was not religion-based. It was mindfulness. It was breath watch, and it was history in the making. 